Fairby and I are so excited to share this with you. We're starting a new series where we are going to teach you how to teach your dog different tricks and tasks. So before I show you guys anything at all, I want to talk to you about setting your dog up for success. So setting your dog up for success looks like a lot of different things, depending on who you ask. But what it means to me is that you have a good relationship with your dog. Your dog knows that they can trust you. You know your dog's currency and you know your dog's limits. So I really wanna focus on rewarding your dog. So this is something that you need to figure out what they like. So this is what I'm calling their currency. You need to figure out what it is they actually like, and then you need to figure out, like really, really drill down and figure out the exact thing. This might be praise, this might be food rewards, it might be toys. Whatever your dog likes, you really need to figure it out. And then you need to kind of drill down and figure out, okay, so let's say that they're toy driven. Are they toy driven for a squeak? Are they toy driven for a ball, a frisbee, a crinkle? Like what really gets them going? And so that is gonna be what you use to kind of pay them for doing tricks. If it's food, I'm gonna get on a soapbox really quickly on this one because this one gets under my skin. <laughs> so if your dog is food driven, use a high value treat. Kibble is not a high value treat. That's not even a treat. That's I feel like there's people who say, oh, just feed them their kibble and you know make them work for it. I don't agree with that. Number one, I think it's not nice. But beyond just thinking it's just not nice, I also think that everyone works better whenever they feel like they are like baseline satisfied. So what I mean is they're not tired, they're not hungry, nothing like really bad has happened to where they're upset, you know, so just baseline necessities, right? So they're not in pain, stuff like that. If you ever have had to be hungry and also have to learn something, you can't process things as well. So the idea of working for food, I feel like is just wrong on a lot of levels. There have been studies done, of course, on children who go to school hungry and they don't perform as well because they're hungry and that's all they can think about. Circle back to dogs now. So your dog might be hungry and they might be going through the motions and doing the thing, but you want them to want to learn it and not to feel like they're forced. Obviously, there are some behaviors that you need your dog to be forced to learn, like not to door dart and not to, you know, do things that are gonna get them in trouble or hurt. We're teaching tricks right now, so this should be a fun experience for your dog. So if you're teaching tricks and you want it to be a lot of fun, then you need to bring something to the table that's fun. So back to what I would pick for food. So Fairby is very food driven and we have high value treats and we have low value treats. She will work for any type of treat. Honestly, she's not super picky, but there's a total difference in how she reacts if it's a high value treat or a low value treat. And I'll show you guys a video of what I'm talking about. So as you can see, it's a huge difference. Like she will go through the action and do the thing, but you can tell she's really half-assing it because she's like, you're not gonna, I know what you have and it's like minimum wage and I'm not that girl. So if you really want your dog to perform well and be excited, then you need to figure out their currency. That's huge. And then you need to go big or go home. So when they're learning, it's really important to use a high value reward. Now, after they get it and they understand what you're asking of them, let's say for sit. Fairby doesn't get a treat every time I say sit. That's kind of just a behavior that's expected. If I tell her to sit, then she needs to do it. I will, I heard that as well. camera just caught that because that's a good example of not rewarding her for doing something. So the gate is there as a gentle reminder that we don't go in that room. It's not even pushed to the wall or anything. It's just kind of there as a reminder. You know, I don't want her up there. And the reason I don't want her up there is because it's by the front door and if something happened and the door got open for some reason, I don't want her up there. She knows boundaries and she knows to wait and not go out a door before I say, but I feel like that extra layer is just helpful. So anyway, all of that to say, if you guys saw, um, I just got up, we heard a noise, I got up, I opened that and walked to the front room. I told her to stay. 
Does she get a reward for that? No, because that's expected behavior. But whenever I was teaching her to stay, I would give her a reward because that's huge. Like for your dog to stay there, for them to stay at first, that's a huge, huge thing. So you reward it, but gradually you don't get a treat for that every single time. But where I'm talking about you need high value treats is when you're teaching new stuff. And then I always think it's fun to give high value treats. Like even if they do know the stuff and you're just practicing, it's still fun, but it doesn't have to be every cookie, which is why in the clip that you saw, we have a kind of a, I didn't think it was a low value treat. I thought it was a high value treat, but you can tell a difference because Fairby doesn't like this as much. So, you know, she's like, oh, that's fine. It's fine. I'll do it for this. But she really wants that bonus, you know, that extra, <laughs> <laughs> the extra thing that's gonna make her work. So guys, whenever you're doing tricks with your dog and you're teaching them stuff, you're gonna be going through these motions over and over and over and over. So you don't need to treat your dog with a whole entire treat every single time. With Farabee, I use what I call pea size pieces. So I use, you know, very small pieces. I mean, a great Dane is probably not gonna appreciate that, but for smaller dogs, Farabee's 30 pounds. I feel like I can get away with this size of treat I give her if she was even a little bit bigger, but obviously it needs to be size appropriate. And that's another reason to use a high value treat. So that little flavor, that little bit is like a lot to them. Like it's, you know, it's very good, it's what they wanted, they want more, they tasted it, it's great. It's very easy if your dog is food driven to do something called jackpot. So what jackpot is, is whenever they do it right and it's a brand new thing, you give them like three or four tiny pieces of the treat. So it would still be pea sized pieces, but you give them three or four. At, not all at once though, you need to hand them one, two, three, like let them chew it up and swallow it for each individual one. It makes it like stick in their head that, wow, I got a lot for that even though it was still the same, pretty much the same amount, it still wasn't a lot. They probably still didn't get a whole cookie, but you know, it was like a big deal. It, it marked it for them. So I'm not sure how you would do jackpot with a toy because it seems like it would be kind of harder. I guess if it was a toy, you could, you know, let's say it's a ball, you could throw the ball three times. You know what I mean? And then that would kind of be a jackpot option. For praise, I guess you could just do it longer, maybe? Another thing is marker words. So you need to have a way to mark things with your dog. So I use the word yes like that whenever Fairby gets something right. I know you guys have heard me say it like that a million times. Um, but you can also use a clicker. So you can buy a clicker and use that. You can click with your mouth. You can do whatever sound you want, but it needs to be a way to mark something. So you always do this whenever they get it. Like as they get it, say the thing, do the marker, word or click or whatever, and then you reward them. And know your dog's limits. So knowing your dog's limits means, are they getting overwhelmed? Are they gonna get overwhelmed? Can they like do the, the thing you're asking them to do physically? Because some dogs, their bodies don't all work the same. You wanna keep your tricks diverse. So what this means is you might wanna start out with an easy trick just to kind of set the tone and let them know like, you know, this is gonna be a fun thing. We're doing tricks now, whatever, if they don't know that word, and then start teaching them the thing and then try it a couple times and then do an easy trick or maybe two or three easy tricks that they know. And then if you wanna try the harder trick, the new trick, whatever, again, try it again, but always end on something they know. End on, I would say, if you can squeeze in like two or three tricks that they actually know at the end, that they know really, really, really well, or their favorite tricks, always end on those because you wanna end on like a positive note for them so they feel successful and so that, you know, they're not like, man, I didn't get it. Like you want them to feel like they got the thing. Like, hey, I'm smart. I got the cookie. I did the thing or whatever. I don't know. I don't know a dog's thing, but you guys know what I'm saying. Like you want to end it on a positive thing for them. Also don't get frustrated with your dog if they don't understand something because keep in mind, we are humans trying to teach a whole other species something. So neither one of us like naturally speak each other's language, you know? So it is very important that you're very patient with them and just make sure that they understand they're trying, you know, you're trying to teach them something, but if they're not getting it, then that's okay, move on to something else. With all of that being said, I am so excited to share our trick series with you. I hope that you guys love it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna link the first video in the series right here. So go check it out and we will see you over there. Bye guys.